Hi everyone, thanks so much for coming out to hear my research looking at the association between patient satisfaction and 30-day post-operative outcomes. Um, I'm Christelle, I'm an MIS and bariatric fellow at the University of Toronto, and I have nothing to disclose. So medicine has made the shift from being primarily what was a paternalistic specialty to one that now focuses on patient-centered care. It therefore should come as no surprise that measures of patient satisfaction are gaining importance, and they're taking over in some cases as markers of quality. This can have significant implications, uh, including implications for financial compensation. In the States, a standardized patient satisfaction survey exists called the HCAHPS that uh, measures the patient's experience across a number of domains. And scores on this survey can account for up to 30% of the hospital's performance score, which is significant. But what's interesting is that the current literature looking at the actual relationship between patient satisfaction and objective measures of clinical outcome are extremely contradictory. The objective of our study, therefore, was to look for an association between patient satisfaction and 30-day post-operative outcomes in a population primarily undergoing general surgery procedures. So our methods. Our population consisted of all patients who had undergone a general surgery procedure, either elective or emergent, at a academic teaching hospital in Toronto. Our study period extended from June of 2012 to March of 2015. It was during this time that our institution had, was first starting to implement the National Surgical Quality Improvement Program. And as part of the NISQIP initiative, we handed out surveys to patients where they were asked to rate their experience of the surgical service on a scale of one to five. One meaning they were not satisfied with their care and five meaning very satisfied. In addition to that, they were asked, would you recommend the service to family and friends? Their options were yes, no, or maybe. The data we then collected from the NISQIP database was used to determine the post-operative 30-day outcomes in this same patient group. So we looked at length of stay, readmission rates, and complications both major and minor. For the purposes of statistical analysis, we divided our population into two groups. A score of one, two, or three meant not satisfied. Four or five meant satisfied. We then used the chi-square test uh, to compare cohorts with respect to the proportion of patients experiencing adverse clinical outcomes. For our study, a p-value of less than 0.05 was considered significant. So what were our results? Over the study period, we managed to collect 757 surveys. That represents a 67.5% response rate. This table shows some of the characteristics of our patient population. The average age was around 50, and 60% of our patients were female. The vast majority, 85.8%, .8 had undergone a laparoscopic procedure, and 81% had an elective rather than an emergent procedure. 72% were inpatients, and most of our patients were in ASA 2 or 3. To give you an idea of the kinds of operations that we covered, the most common elective procedure was the laparoscopic Ruan Y gastric bypass, representing 38% of all cases in the study. Other common elective procedures were laparoscopic right hemicolectomy and a laparoscopic inguinal hernia repair. The most common emergent procedure was the laparoscopic appendectomy, closely followed by the lap coli. So from our survey, 91.5% of people were considered satisfied with care and 94% responded yes when asked whether they would recommend the service to family and friends. We then wanted to look for the association between reported satisfaction and the type of procedure. We found no significant relationship between reported satisfaction and having a laparoscopic compared to open procedure. Interestingly, we found a trend towards an association between satisfaction and having an elective compared to emergent procedure, but this didn't approach statistical significance. So this slide shows the main outcome of our study. Here we're looking at the association between reported satisfaction and those 30-day post-operative outcomes. Like I mentioned, we looked at prolonged hospital length of stay, readmission, and then complications, major, minor, and overall. You can see we found significant correlations between a lower patient satisfaction, readmission, minor complication, and overall complication. So I'll state that main finding again. The significant relationship we found was between lower satisfaction 
and 30-day readmission and the occurrence of minor or overall complications. Interestingly, we didn't actually find a significant relationship between lower satisfaction and having a major complication. This, there are some limitations to our study I'd like to point out. The survey, as I said, was distributed when we implemented the NISQIP program and further study is being carried out to validate the survey for our population. We included both emergency and elective procedures and that lends heterogeneity to the sample. What we're showing here is data from a single institution and so we have a smaller sample size. And finally, to get good responses, we accepted surveys either in written form or responses over the phone, which again uh, introduces some bias into our results. So what are the implications? Like I said before, there is contradictory literature about the relationship between satisfaction and, and objective clinical outcomes. Clearly things other than purely safe and quality care influence a patient's experience of their hospital encounter. And something that has been extensively studied in qualitative studies is the effectiveness of a surgeon's communication with his patients. What's also important is that a lot of the satisfaction literature that we have at the moment comes out of the United States, and there's a paucity of literature looking at this significant issue in Canada's universal healthcare system. Given the association we found, therefore, we think further study is warranted to validate patient satisfaction as a marker of quality, and until then, we should use the results of these surveys to supplement rather than re replace our traditional methods. Are there any questions? <laughs>